ready as long as everybody else is. Yep, we're all good. We've got five and the applicant. Okay, great. Well, if everybody's all set, welcome to the Tuesday, January the 2nd, 2024. First time I've said that. Uh, meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let all the committee members and staff introduce themselves. Martha Smirsky, member. Benjamin Cheney, member. William Russell, member. Steve Rebecca. Everett, member. Can I go? <laughs> yeah. Rebecca, uh, I'm an alternate. I don't know if that counts or not. You can say if you're an alternate or not, it's up to you. Uh, okay. Meredith Crandall, staff. Okay, and at this point, we'll let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures and process. Okay, so I'm gonna be sharing my screen. The stuff on the screen is more for um, people who are watching the meeting via Zoom, uh, via Orca Media um because we do have it is live streamed and then um but there will be some information in my little spiel for everybody to be mindful of for those of you who have not done this before for those of you who have done this what probably feels like a hundred times <laughs> you can probably tune out a little bit all right um slideshow from the beginning all righty so for those viewing tonight's design review committee meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in the discussion via the Zoom platform through either video or telephone access options. So if you wanna do the full experience, being able to see things on the screen and us see you, you can just put this link into your web browser um, and you should be brought right into the meeting. Um, whoop, hold on, I wasn't supposed to go back. Um, and then here's a phone number to dial. Um, if you just want to be able to hear and speak. And then there is the um, meeting ID. If you have problems accessing the meeting, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. I will be monitoring my email throughout the meeting. Um, and if anyone is, um, for those attending via Zoom, turning on your video is optional. Um, and if you're having issues with connectivity, my suggestion is actually to turn off your camera. So you'll still see, see us, but we don't see you. It helps with bandwidth that way. Um, for everyone who's attending, um, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise. Um, if Be aware that if you suddenly are muted by me or everything freezes up, it's because we're having some sort of security issue um, and I'm dealing with that. Um, if anybody dials in on the phone, um, they can use star six and that will mute and unmute them. Um, please reserve the Zoom chat function for troubleshooting or logistics questions only. Um, if you have a substantive question or comment about an item on the agenda, please make sure to um, raise your hand and get called on by the chair before speaking. Um, and then uh, you can, can go forward at that point. Um, we don't have any general members of the public on tonight, so I'm going to skip that part of my, my little bit. Um, please note that in the event the public is unable to access tonight's meeting, and I would find out about that via um, my email, then the meeting will have to be continued to a time, place, and certain. I will now hand the meeting back over to the chair. At this point, I would like to have everyone speak their names to approve the agenda. Ben. Martha. Rebecca. William. And Steve. So the agenda is approved. Since we've approved the agenda, unless there's an objection, mm -hmm. can we go to the first applicant and then go to the elections after, or is it necessary to do the elections, officer elections first? But technically, we're supposed to do the officer elections first. Um, what okay, can... I, I think it, it kind of depends on who people were going to nominate for positions because I know Eric has been vice chair for a long time 
but he's out sick and I haven't had a conversation with him about anything. So if people were interested in nominating Eric for either of those positions, we should probably postpone and wait till the next meeting, which would actually be an amendment to the agenda. <laughs> um, but just okay. because I, I don't, I don't, I, I haven't spoken to him to see if he's still interested. Um, I know he's talked about cutting back some, but if people were okay. interested in nominating someone else who's here tonight for the vice chair position um, and we have somebody for the chair, then we could do the elections now. Um, I'd rather wait for Eric. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting nods. <laughs> yes. That sounds like a, a good idea since he's not here and he is the uh, vice chair to this point. So we will table okay. that till the next meeting. And we will go to the first applicant for 89 Main Street, Nettie Real Estate. The applicant is Onion River Outdoors. Is there somebody here from Onion River to describe their signs? Hi, Steve. I'm Jen Roberts. I'm one of the owners of Onion River. Yes. Hi, Jen. Hi. So um, I've never done this before, so I'd be interested in some guidance around what you would like to hear from us. Um, I say us because my husband, Kip, is actually listening in here. Okay. Uh, so I, Jen, I, they've all seen the application that we submitted. I also have those materials so I can share them on my screen. I think generally just describe what you're planning to do verbally is usually what people do. If you want me to share particular items, I'm happy to. Um, also just for everybody to know, um, I did look up and pull some of the um, real particulars about the lights that are over the artisan's hand sign. So if that comes up, I do have that information. Um, but Jen, I would just describe, you know, what you're doing, um, explain those images and let me know if you want me to share any. Okay. Um, so our signs, we are looking to have three identical signs um, made of sign, board, uh, sign foam that will have a wood background, wood look. It'll actually be printed on the sign foam. And then raised lettering, three quarter inch raised lettering. Um, and it's simply our onion and on the left side and onion river outdoors on the sign. Um, the exact dimensions of it, I would have to look back at the application um, again, but it there's a green wooden band around the building where all of the signs for other businesses are. And so ours fits sort of appropriately in that um, band sign, you know, dimensions wise. It has a little room at the top for a light. Um, we are not going to do a light like Artisan's Hand. Um, we're just doing something small and subtle. And but so the sign would be, there's two, there would be two signs um, at the corners, you know, a little setback from each corner, but over our entrances there at the corner, and then one sign over our entrance further up East State Street. Jen, did you intend to have a light over each of those three signs? Mm hmm Mm -hmm. Yep. And and the kind of light, it looks like there's some sort of a gooseneck. Is that correct? Um, it it does have a gooseneck. And my understanding, you know, I'm I'm leaning on the designers at Wood and Wood for this. Yeah. Um, for how this works. I I didn't care for the look of the artisan hand really big gooseneck lights. So I asked them if we could do something that was um less visible and a little more subtle. So I, I believe it's um, not going to come up and out like that. It's, I think there is a picture in, on yeah. the- Yeah, your drawing indicates that it comes out from the wall 24 inches. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. How, how many lights do you ex expect to have? The Wood and Wood said, we, with the size of our sign that with this new light that they have, um, that's sort of a panel light, they think that one light's sufficient per sign. They said we could do two if it doesn't seem to be adequate, but we would do some testing with it um, ahead of time to make sure that it was going to be adequate. They thought it would be. 
Okay, we could, unless anybody has any objection, we could go with e either option, uh, depending on the spread of the light. It shows the six inch by four inch LED. And if the spread of that light doesn't cover the underwear outdoors, all the, the lettering, then you could have the option to use two of those to eliminate the sign. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not familiar with that. To like, see anything that can, that can cover that 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 with adequately but if they if that's something new i'll have to look it up that seems you know seems great if you can do it well we'll leave that to the expertise of wood and wood they're they've been doing this for a while and sparky's pretty good is there i'm looking at the sign is there a pen stripe around the perimeter of the sign Oh gosh, we went back and forth on that. And I think the answer is no, because um, I think we decided that the green background of the building where the signs are mounted was border enough. Okay. What we can do is if it, if it's still up in the air and you have and you decide to do otherwise, we can give you the option to do a pinstripe in the same color as the lettering on the sign. And again, that's just an option. That's up to you okay, whether yeah. you do it or not. I think we decided against that, but that would be great if we had that option, if that we'll works just, for you. We'll, we'll leave it in there in case you put it up and decide you'd prefer a pinstripe. Okay. Does anyone else have any other comments, questions, or suggestions? No, I, I, I think that they know that they're going to be mounting this in the mortar rather than in the brick area. Um, like you said, Steve, Sparky knows this pretty well. He knows our process. Yes. And and actually the sign is mounted in the, the sign band, which mm -hmm. in all three locations, which is wood. Yeah. And what so, about the light? What about the light? The light it's also in the wood. Looks Okay. It looks like it's in the, at the top of the sign band, so okay. the, the light, the the bar, if it's setting up two feet, the bar would probably go out either straight or fairly arched, with, or with a very small arch with that small head, that six inch by four inch head. Okay. So I think we're good there. So with the option of two lights, if need be, the applicant is proposing one, but with the option of two lights, if needed, and the option of doing a pinstripe, does anyone have any other suggestions or comments? Otherwise, we can go through. Well, the, um, I mean, just just one comment. It's not part of the part of our review purview, but the. And I noticed that you have pine in the behind you, and the sign is pine. And I, I may be mistaken, but I thought that the your East Gate Street entrance was was fir. You're right; it is. Um, that's yeah. That was a. The pine is sort of a, I think, a more of an Onion River thing. The entrance that they put in was fir. That's pretty astute. I. I have recognized that as fur. <laughs> so just in the sense that those could, you know, if you wanted those to match, but if, if it's a, you know, should have the option to make fur, but if, if it's fine, if it is the branding thing, that's, that's perfectly fine. I guess I hadn't thought about that. Both of them, both both of them look fine. So unless you want to pinpoint one, whatever again, whatever you decide with Sparky is is fine. Both probably both stick with nice. that. Both look nice against the green anyway. Yep. And Meredith, I have a request. Yes. I did not get a criteria sheet in my packet. 
So, oh no! But, okay. But yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you if you would read through the appropriate criteria. Yeah, so I'm. I can I'm sorry. I think it's because it was a duplicate, yeah. and so I was like, "Oh, he probably has it from last time." But I, yeah, give me a second because I can also put it up on the screen. But I will read through it as well. Um, I am really sorry, Steve. No, that's okay. I I didn't know I should have checked before I I left <laughs> with the packet. I can't believe I spaced on that one. Um. So so this is going to be a little interesting um, to do the, you'll have to come in tomorrow to put in the right stuff yes. in or just write it on a piece of paper and we'll attach it. But I think I yes. want to have it on the, on the form. All right. Uh, let me share screen. All right. Because it's a sign, pretty much all of these apply. So um, criteria one, the size, location, design, and color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior signs within the design review overlay district shall be compatible with the buildings and structures of the site and surrounding properties. Acceptable. Where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bans on historic structures. Acceptable. I'm going to circle as we go along. Uh, uh, if a building has multiple tenant tenants, there shall be consistency in placement and size among all signs. Absolutely acceptable. <laughs> it is recommended that sign placement be centered over building entries. In this case, it actually is over the two entries into their space. Acceptable. Sign installation shall minimize damage to character defining materials on the building. Acceptable. Uh, we'll say in masonry buildings, uh, it's not accept not applicable here because you're doing it in the wooden sign band. Sign design color and topography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings. Acceptable. Sign support structure shall be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves. Also acceptable. Lighting fixtures for signs on, oh, well, that's historic building. This technically is not a historic building yet because it's not listed on the registers. So sorry, that should be not applicable. Um, lighting fixtures for signs mounted on all building facades shall be designed with appropriate housing, shielding, and photometrics to ensure that there is appropriate lighting levels and illumination that focuses on the sign panels exclusively. And that is also acceptable. And then the optional changes that are be to be determined by the applicant and the sign designer are that if one lighting fixture is insufficient to illuminate the sign, a second fixture can be added. And then there's an option if they cho choose to put a pinstripe around on the perimeter of the sign, that is also an optional, an option for the applicant. And again, neither are required, they're just options. And that's all. And you can describe the next step for them. Uh, do once. you need to have a, you want to vote, Steve? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're all well, off of, all off of the normal thing. The, I don't have the form. All, all in favor of the applications, speak your names. This is Martha. I say yes. You're muted, Ben. Ben says yes. William says yes. Do you need me also? Yeah, yeah. We, right. we, as long as we don't have more than five, everybody can vote. Thanks for checking, though, Rebecca. Okay. Rebecca says yes. And Steve says yes. So it's approved. All in Awesome. <laughs> so, Thank Jen. You. Thanks to you all. Jen, Thank you. I, Thank you for I, will, I will need the details on the number of lights um, and the lumens per light before I can issue the... Um, 
permit. I, like I said, I was able to find the old, um, the most recent sign change for artisans hand that application. So I have the information on those lights so we can, I can figure out like what the total light emittance is right now. Um, the, the brightness, the lumen output of the artisans hand lights is, um, uh, 1200 lumens per fixture. So just to give you a sense of how bright those are, if you want to dim the individual fixtures down a little bit, it's really, it's going to depend on what kind of, of bulbs or lamps those fixtures are taking. Um, but if you can make sure when you figure out with Sparky, how many you're going to do, what that lumen output is per fixture. I'll need to know what that is before I can issue the um, permit. Cause I have to do a whole write up on the light allowance for the parcel. Okay. We'll do. Okay. okay. Awesome. I have, a, I have a dumb procedural question. Since this is a, like the fixtures that the artisan hands have really like they they have, I think three, Pictures and they don't. They well, so yeah. So they don't. They're not gonna. They need to be. Their light is more concentrated, so there's a chance that these could come in at at a higher lumen, but just spread it over a, a wider amount. And I, I would suggest that that shouldn't inherently disqualify, you know, the 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 lights. Right. It it, it wouldn't. It's the every in Montpelier we have depending on where you are in the city there are different total lumen output per acre allowances um and so we have to actually keep track of that um, as new lights are being added or removed what the total is um, to make sure that things don't go over this is a pretty big parcel for downtown and there's actually not a whole lot of exterior lights on it um, so I don't see this being a problem in it going over. Um, and it doesn't measure like how, f how big the spread it is actually just lumen output is how they're measuring it at this point. Um, and whether or not it's fully or partially shielded, um, because these are going to be, do have a shield and are pointed right at the building pretty much at the sign, the shielding isn't going to be as much of an issue for this. Um, but there is because of the whole dark skies initiative, there's a, a total lumen output per acre um, that has to be complied with. So that's what we'll be looking at. But I don't, I don't think it's going to be an issue. Um, so yeah, so you get me that input, Jen. Steve will sign this form, and then once I have both of those things together. Um, we'll be able to get the permit out the door and um, normally we just mail them, but if you want it in hand sooner, we can email you when it's ready. So well, you can let me know when you send me the lumen information, the lights information from Woody, okay. which you'd prefer. Okay. Okay. Thanks so much. Thanks everyone. Okay. Thank you very much and good luck with your project and your new location. It looks great. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Is everyone I had to look at the minutes from the December the 4th meeting? Yeah, I have. And I'll make a motion to accept them the way they are. Do we hear a second? Anna, yes, I second. Okay. All in favor of the minutes, speak your names. This is Martha. I say yes. Ben says yes. And Steve says yes. So the minutes are approved. Does anyone have any other business at this point? I have a question for, for Steve and for, for Meredith. I know that we are being very um, liberal and, and accepting in terms of the new businesses trying to re businesses trying to come back after the flood. Um, is Are they able to just move signs on an administrative level, or do they need any kind of a permit to do that if they're using a sign over again? So, yep. So the I don't remember who was at the meeting when it happened, but the committee voted to let me review those on sort of a temporary basis. 
Okay. If they were moving an existing sign from a place downtown to another place downtown to be able to transfer that sign um, administratively, they still get a permit. I'm still giving them a permit for it so okay. that there's a record that it has been moved. Um, I'm still checking the sign allowances on those buildings that they're moving them to. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, they're basically being told, look, this is a, this is a limited time thing. You're going to have to come back to the committee when you are ready to design a new sign for that space for a lot of them. Okay. Um, I know that, uh, who was it? Uh, Katie's Jewels. Mm -hmm. um, put up a sign at the rear of the, um, it's on East State Street. So it's the yeah. one with the kind of funky curve with yeah. the shingles on it. Yeah. And the uh, yeah. yeah, the Heaney building, the rear of the Heaney building. I just couldn't remember what the, the number is there, but um, I was leery about allowing them to put that sign on that shingled surface, but you can't put anything underneath it. There's no wall space to do it. And I was able to look back through Google Earth Street View and previously the design review committee at some point had approved a sign mm -hmm. on that in that location. Mm -hmm. So it's a little big for that spot right now, but I let her like just for width wise for the width of that space. But we've talked and she's planning on getting a new new sign, new new style, but she needed to be able to somehow give notice that she was in that location. That's, so that's, that's great, that's, Meredith. That's exactly what I was thinking about. And people really wanted to know where she was so that it makes total yep. sense. I was just wondering if, if yes, there so was. Yes, they are like getting permits and mm -hmm. they're not allowed, like the, like I've had some people who also are like just temporarily refacing ground signs, ground mounted signs, mm -hmm. like just putting something temporary over another business's placard on there. Yeah. Um, but if they're doing that, they can't make the total sign area any bigger than it was mm -hmm. before. And I'm not letting them make changes to the support structure. It has to be something where all they're doing is covering or replacing the the information face that's going on there. Mm -hmm. Um, So you might occasionally see a couple of those where it looks funky and you're like, what? They just temporarily tack something over it. And I'm like, they're just trying to get into a dry space because they couldn't refit their flooded space. Yeah. Um, but they all all know that they're they're going to have to come for a redesign and some of them you know like the landowner is planning to redesign the entire ground mounted sign because it's old or whatever mm -hmm. um and in a lot of those instances for the ground mounted signs many of them are also waiting to see what happens with the um regulation updates that hopefully will be adopted in February um, that may change the size limitations on some of the ground mounted signs. Okay, thank um, you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, I uh, want to just remind everybody that we have Rebecca Owens and William Russell Yay! as design review committee yes. members now. Um, excuse, excuse me for not uh, welcome, oh. welcoming <laughs> them earlier when we were introducing members. So well, welcome to the committee. Thank you. Thanks. It's uh, it's well, Steve. We were we were on the this committee together. I think twenty years ago. <laughs> it couldn't be that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe eighteen. Oh. Wow. <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to make sure. It was recognized and we talked about it a little bit before the official opening of the meeting, Steve, but um, I think being able to get everything done with, with Jen was a good thing. Um, okay. Yeah. And do keep an eye out. So the, the new, the zoning changes tweaks um, it looks like those are going to have two hearings before city council in February. So the two city council meetings will have those hearings um, and hopefully they'll adopt them then. Cause otherwise it'll have to, probably wait for new city council members to get situated after town meeting day. Okay. Well, good. Does anybody have anything else to add? I make a motion to adjourn. And I'll second wait. it. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Martha. Ben. William. And Steve, is it so the meeting meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming.